Hi guys, just wanted to show you something cool. Uh, this is my uh, live video streaming rig. Uh, I use this to broadcast live video from uh, mountain bike racing matches. And um, uh, in this summer, I'm going to be using it for paintball as well. The idea is to bro so that the general public can see the game from the perspective of the players um, as it goes, basically. If, as, as players move, advance more into the woods, the spectators lose direct line of sight so they don't know what's going on and the idea is to rebroadcast the video from from the um, uh, masks or, or the cameras mounted on the mask or in the helmet or whatever on your body or your barrel uh, back to the main central location and then it can also be rebroadcast live onto the internet so to accomplish this i'm using uh, ubiquity networks bullet m2 this is 2.4 gigahertz version there's also bullet m5 uh, don't use bullet M5 if you're trying to build a similar rig because uh, 5 gigahertz uh, bullet M5, which is 5 gigahertz version, uh, doesn't penetrate through the leaves and, and trees and, and bushes as good as 2.4. The lower the frequency, the better you will, the better the penetration, but also the bandwidth will also be lower. So you won't be able to uh, transfer as high of a quality of a video stream or as many video streams as you would at uh, 2.4 gigahertz. So uh, the antenna I'm using is Ingenious uh, EAG2408. That's a DVI omnidirectional antenna. Uh, it gives me about 1500 feet through the woods and uh, or more depending on how dense the woods are. And direct line of sight, um, I'd say five kilometers. Um, I haven't tested the maximum range I can get away, but uh, if, you, uh, if you're standing on the highway and uh, with your buddy and you're five kilometers apart, uh, this thing work, will work great. Um, of course, it's useless in the woods. But if you're if you're doing downhill races, if you put the access point up on the mountain on the fiberglass pole, and then you put the uh, clients in the other the other sticks, basically I call them clients. You put them in the backpacks of the riders. Uh, they will broadcast the video back. So uh, for video itself, I'm using Sony SNC CH110. Um, you can also use uh, your GoPro if if, uh, if you have a version that supports Wi-Fi streaming or any other camera. What you'll have to do is you'll have to flash the firmware from the factory um, Air OS to uh, DDWRT and then create a secondary wireless interface. So uh, your camera would connect to the, the secondary wireless interface um, and then the to Ubiquiti Networks. Uh, a bullet and then the bullet will use the primary interface to connect back to um, to the access point up on uh, at the high point basically on the mountain whatever um, to power all this stuff I use uh, Milwaukee power tool batteries so this is a 12 volt um, 2.6 amp power battery and to get the power from it I'm using this uh, uh, battery holder it's made for a heating um, uh, a heated jacket Milwaukee makes, let me see if I can, yeah, I can't focus on this. The part number is 4372-1000. So 43-72-1000. Uh, you can find it online. Those are pretty cheap. The beautiful thing about this is it has a low, uh, low voltage disconnect circuit inside, meaning that when you drain your battery to a certain volt, down to a certain voltage, it'll disconnect the power at this jack because this is where you get the 12 volts. With lithium batteries, if you drain them below a certain voltage, uh, you damage them irreparably and then you, you have to throw them out. So if I connect, uh, I can connect wires here at those terminals and get 12 volts out of here. But the problem is once I drain this battery below 9 volts, it's garbage. So this thing prevents that from happening. So you, you, you get your useful charge and then this thing will disconnect it. Plus you have a neat uh, barrel plug here for your 12 volts and uh, I do use two of those one runs ubiquity networks uh, Bullet and the other one runs my camera and the cameras P this camera is PoE only um, power over power uh, power over Ethernet um, And to get the power injected into my cat 5. I'm using Electronics netway uh, 112 so this takes 12 volts DC puts out 48 volts DC and mixes it into the Ethernet um, So I'm powering it here um, so I do, you can, you can, if you use one of those to power the PoE injector and the Ubiquiti networks, uh, the voltage drop is going to be so high that, uh, one of the devices, either Ubiquiti, either the, uh, bullet or the PoE adapter will not start. 
So uh, use a separate battery. If if you don't want to buy this and invest money, I already had those rechargeable batteries that I use for my power tools. So if you don't want to buy them and invest money into power tools, just uh, get battery holders on eBay and get a bunch of uh, 1.5 volt alkaline D batteries and then just uh, get enough of them to build the 12 volt pack. And that 12 volt pack will easily run the, the bullet and it'll easily run the Ultronics uh, PoE injector. So the model is Netway 112. The bullets are actually designed to run off of 24 volts, but they work all the way to down to, I think, 10, 10 and a half volts. So they work, I tried them off of 12 volts, they work fine. If you try at lower voltages, like 10 volts or so, or 11 volts, they become unstable. Sometimes they don't connect or don't boot properly. Um, I don't know if I mentioned, uh, in order for you to connect the cell phone, uh, sorry, not the cell phone, you, your Wi-Fi camera, like a GoPro, uh, the bullet that's gonna be in your backpack has to be flashed with DDWRT. And you need to configure this, the firmware to uh, have a second wireless interface. So your camera, your GoPro will connect to the secondary wireless interface. And then primary wireless interface will go from this bullet to the bullet up on top of the mountain. And uh, this gives me, with ideal condition, I get uh, 65 megabit per second stream, which is good enough to stream 1080p video. Uh, this camera is uh, 720p at 30 frames per second. Um, this is pretty much it. Um, if you want to build, uh, to power the Ubiquiti networks, uh, you don't need any special, they're not PoE, they're what's called power injection, which is different from PoE. Uh, power injection is you take the blue pair and the brown pair and you just supply between 12 and 24 volts on, on those pairs to feed the device. Make sure you don't backfeed it back into your uh, networking gear. I'm using uh, this thing here, which is, uh, uh, this is an adapter that comes with uh, Motorola Canopy which is a similar device. Actually, the guys who made Canopy left Motorola and, and started uh, Ubiquiti. Um, the only difference, and you have to be careful, is the polarity for the Motorola part and for the Ubiquiti is opposite. So you'll have to, if this, this is from Motorola, you'll have to cut it off and f flip the wires around for this to work. So you'll run the Cat5 from here to, uh, to a jack here, and then this will go to your IP camera. So this is my IP network camera. And for the software I'm using um, to capture the video and, and show it on the screen, I'm using Exact Vision software. It's spelled E-X-A-C-Q Vision. So I'll Google Exact Vision and uh, you can use the starter edition. It's about 40 bucks. And if you wanna buy it, uh, go to your local uh, security company that sells alarms or cameras. Uh, they should be able to order it for you. And you pay 40 bucks per license per camera. So if you have, five uh five rider mountain bike riders and you need one uh, you need, remember you only need one of those for each rider and uh only one of those on at the base because they it's a multi-point connection so so all of those will connect back to one device um and um uh anyways lost my, <laughs> lost my train of thought so uh if you have multiple riders and you want to record the uh, multiple video streams you just have to pay 40 bucks per li license per camera for the exact vision software. So if you have five people, it's gonna cost you 200 bucks to record five of them at the same time and you can have split screen. And then there's utility to capture the video off the screen and then rebroadcast it to YouTube and so on. So uh, gamers use it, you can, thousands of programs online, you can find them. Anyways, uh, the idea is to have a, a very uh, powerful, robust, legal, because the, there is a certain limitations as to how powerful your radios can be. So it's a legal setup, you know, FCC or uh, CRTC is not going to go after you or whatever the radio regulatory body in your country. Um, you, it, it's, it's cheap. Uh, the antenna is 24 bucks. The ubiquity bullet is 85 to 125 bucks, depending on where you buy it. Uh, IP cameras, there's tons of IP cameras on eBay. This one particular one, I got it for a hundred bucks. Um, uh, you might, it might be more in in other countries, uh, I don't know, but uh, Google it, it's C SNC CH110. It has no sound. If you want a true 1080p camera that has sound, try Samsung uh, SNB7002. That's pretty expensive, it's 600 bucks, I believe. Anyways, um, but this setup allows me to stream multiple streams at the same time, very high bandwidth. Um, I can piggyback other services on the TCP IP, such as capturing the speed of the rider, 
or um, uh, the heart rate or all the health parameters to uh, the trend of how fast he's going. If you're filming paintball, you can overlay whatever stats, how many paintballs you have shot onto your video. If you if you write software, you can have a, a laptop in your backpack it was doing a whole bunch of other stuff. You can connect a bunch of web cameras uh, to a laptop and then have the laptop connected to this and broadcast back to the base. So this thing is pretty universal and uh, I haven't seen a setup like this out in the wild. I'm sure people tried different wireless setups, but uh, it's completely digital. It's very, it's off the shelf parts, customizable, easy to build. Anybody can build this. Um, and uh, anyways, uh, I'll see you, check my YouTube channel in summertime and you'll probably find some live streams of me playing paintball. See ya.